our government is anti-vax because our government awarded, if you go by the definition, if it's supposed to be anybody even questioning, um, our government has awarded since before COVID a lot of money to people who have been injured by vaccines. And this is a gene therapy. And our government is not a safe government. I mean, Zantac, there's a lawsuit going on because Zantac knew that they had a cancer-causing chemical in their product and they never needed to put it there. And there's only a, a lawsuit going on now with that. I mean, you can look at Famil, Familohide. Fam, now I don't know how to say it. It was given to pregnant women for anti-nausea, I think in the 60s and the babies were born with short limbs and all that and i know people some people who have had that and they have great lives but some people suffered a lot i don't think some babies even survived because they had limb you know deformities and there's um examples of this over and over thalidomide thalidomide and and i don't know why people are so trusting, you know, to the point where I'm not allowed to eat somewhere because I don't want to take an experimental injection. On the face of it, it's obscene. Like, I can't believe that we're doing this. I can't believe that there's a fight. And you see all the trouble they had to put in that ramp. And they did it because they know that that's the right thing to do. But denying me food they think is the right thing to do. Denying taking my money, they think is the right thing to do. And if it was really about infectiousness, they should have said, okay, everybody leave, whole business is closed because we exposed everybody already. And they weren't like running for the hills, right? They could have left me there and left the ramp there because they're so afraid they're gonna get it infected, right? They didn't do that because it's not about that. They just wanna be, act like they're in control. I remember really wanting to do a bus sit-in with yeah. you. But then you were like, no, that's I too, was too emotional. Yeah. Cause it's, and I get it. Well, there's a documentary on Tubi called The Biggest Obstacle. <laughs> and I'm in there and it's about how hard it is to take the New York City subway as a person with a disability. Um, and I actually also have a fear of the subway. So for me, the bus is like my last bastion of freedom. I mean, I was with another freedom fighter last night doing this kind of work. And when the bus came I, right away, I was like, I got to get my mask. And he was like, Julie, don't put it on unless they ask you. But that is like probably my one fear is because I don't want to be denied taking the bus because it's my last bastion of freedom. I mean, I can wheel places but I can't really wheel far. Sometimes the chair will stop randomly or it runs out of juice. And the bus is where I feel safe and it's where I can, you know, travel. And so in that way, I can see how other people maybe acquiesce to the shots and stuff because I acquiesce to the mask on the bus. Um, and I've suffered. I think I've suffered because of it. I mean, yesterday when I went on the bus, I did end up putting on the mask and there was, I think he was homeless. He was in a wheelchair. He got on the bus without the mask and the bus, he never put on the mask and the bus driver didn't take him off, but the bus driver yelled at him and he handled it. I'm not a person that could handle that. I'm just, I'm strong in other ways, but I can't handle somebody yelling in I my face. Yeah, so I've definitely been I believe my lungs have been damaged and psychologically I think it's damaging. Um, yeah. Was I, uh, was I too like harsh? No, I, I was kind of, I shut down a little. I just wanted to no. make sure that was okay. That's, that was the right thing to do. I mean, I, I said my piece. There's nobody in the trials like me. I don't feel safe and that a few days ago there was a, a, a release. Uh, Aaron Suri and the uh, I Can Decide organization, they had to fight to get these documents and it shows that Pfizer hired 600 full-time extra workers just to deal with the adverse events of the shots. Now, if I could say that alone to them and hand them the paper, the legal documents from Pfizer, 
and they still don't want to service me. I mean, what else could I, what else can any of us do? They have to read those papers. I hope they don't throw them away. I hope they read them. That costs a lot of money to print stuff like that. Yeah. I want to scream and yell and tell them that they're wrong. I don't know what good that'll do. You know, I print out the data. I just want to make sure that it sticks No, but mind. but you're, you, I should be more like that. No, and, I, I, that's why you, you have yeah. to come with you. So to yes. Do that, right? And I just want to make sure that was, yeah. that was not too much, not enough. Like, I want to make sure I have the right balance for you. That's all I'm trying no, to No, I kind of shut down too because that feeling of, oh, <coughs> you're choking. That feeling of having to be dependent on somebody just to get out of a place yeah. doesn't feel good either, you know? Yeah, know? And for her to say, well, she stood there and she listened to you, well, she had the luxury to get out of there, you know, as quick yeah. as she wanted, as fast as she wanted, if she yeah. wanted. I don't have that yeah. that luxury. So even that alone, um, it was very, it just put me in a place of, you sort of shut down emotionally. And, and I can be strong in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways I am sensitive. And I think if I wasn't sensitive, I wouldn't be so strong, if that makes sense. I know, I know what you mean. So it's a balance. Yeah, it's an interesting balance, isn't it? Yeah. Me, I can't, I can't, I don't take buses. I, that's why I walk yeah. over here. I don't mind walking with you, I, I feel yeah, safe. I don't mind, I love walking. But then I also hate the fact that I'm scared to take a bus in yeah, my own city. I know. And it's over the mass because I've been treated so badly yeah. just to be, ride, ride the cross town bus. Yeah. And then what gets me extra upset is that at least I could force myself into the bus. You can't. They won't even take the ramp down and for you. Some of them, it's not like that all the time. But I mean, you don't know. It's You don't know what you're stepping into, what is going to happen. Yeah. So... It's very hard. And you know, the MTA is the only one that I know of in the city, a city agency that is not mandating the, mandating the shots for their workers because they fought against it. But they're mandating still the mask on the buses. I mean, I've had a bus driver say thank you for your work who saw me on New York Freedom Rally and say that he supports me. I don't allow myself to be tagged in social media and I kind of keep myself private because as much as I, I can because <coughs> I have a lot of anxiety and I can only hold so much somebody came up to me at the rally in DC and they were like Julie there's so many disabled people from the shots there's this online group maybe you could help them navigate the system I mean I'm just hanging on navigating the system for myself yeah. I don't have much of a support system and that's not me playing pity for myself it's just I don't want also to to say that I'm gonna be there for somebody when I know physically emotionally I can't I mean, you know my job is to hang on to myself you help people as much as possible as much as you feel you can I don't think people should do less than what they think they can. But also, if you push yourself, if I end up in the hospital, I'm gonna, I, they're gonna kill me, and that's dramatic. But I mean, with what we know about remdesivir and what we, these tests can pop up positive for anybody, and it's just dangerous. And I have to take care of my health. And you know, I was talking to Kevin about, I, I, I'm, my mother was an alcoholic. I'm not a drinker, but. I've certainly been drinking a lot more since all of this because you just, not that I'm an alcoholic, but you just, it's you so painful. To take the edge off. Yeah, it's so painful to hang on to all this truth. Yeah. And you do need something. And so I don't. I'll, I'll trust me. I, yeah. We use marijuana. Yeah, I need to get back on. I was on the medical program. I need to get back on it. But I think that's a healthier alternative but i i can see i empathize very deeply with people who are in denial and it's not right but i empathize with them because it is it's like opening a wound it's exposing yourself to the truth is like opening yourself to a wound it's not easy for me i don't want to live in a world where i don't know the truth or i mean i guess we don't know the truth until we die and maybe not even then but i want to know as close to the truth as I can. I'm not comfortable living any other way. Yeah. yeah. You know? And yeah. my my friend since I was very young was Celia Farber. Mm-hmm. You can look up her work. 
she's a journalist. She's been exposing the truth for 30 plus years. Yeah. And I love Celia. And she taught me, you know, not to be afraid to look beyond the mainstream headlines and look for real news, you know. And, she, and she's the first one that told me about Event 201, mm. you know. So I look up to her and to people like her. Yeah. And Well, now a lot of people yeah. do the same with you, Julie. A lot of people look Aww. up to you. True. I don't go telling everybody my medical history and my personal history, but I don't want to hide anymore that, I mean, I never, I never promoted what I knew about the VAERS adverse events reporting. And uh, Celia has been a reporter for um, people who have suffered, you know, adverse events of vaccines and other pharmaceuticals for many years. And I was never, if somebody asked me directly, I would answer, yes, you know, this is what I believe in. But if they didn't ask me directly, I would kind of avoid it. And I think that's kind of karma, you know, like, I think all of us maybe didn't fight hard enough and now we're at in this situation. Yeah. So we're you know, we have a <coughs> Because I never thought in a million years. I mean, it's I just <laughs> that this would happen I that know. How crazy is that? What really? is this, you know? And it's only and I just feel like only a few people really understand what we've been going through. Yeah. We're, Bec because we're the deplorables, right? Yeah. Um, the undesirable. The yeah. <laughs> but does undesirables have feelings too? Yeah. People are losing stamina, you know. <coughs> I think I'm losing it because of this work, but I mean, yeah, people how, are just how have you been, uh, tired. How it, you it's been? very dehumanizing. Yeah. It's very scary. And then every day it's like I can't help reading the information. It's like I'm addicted. But I don't want to read it. But it's like I feel Julie like I have read to read. And then it's I have a, I have a, I have. It's a like prescription for you. Horrible. It is horrible. So stop doing it. Stop getting yourself outraged. That's part of why you're getting sick. Yeah. Okay, Julie. I want you to do a really important thing. What? Which is to not watch anything from like I don't know after. 1990 some eight or something like that. Okay. Yeah, like this, watch movies that you like. Okay, I've been watching uh, 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 not Kurosawa, um, uh, Miyazaki films, right? Okay. Like I've been watching just classics. Um, I, I mean, I've been doing a, like I teach, so I, I do, you know Disney and movies. Like I know a lot of conservatives. Oh, we watched Demolition. Some a, a follower recommended Demolition Man. We saw Braveheart. Which ah. was Amazing. Uh, there will be blood was a favorite I saw recently. Uh, never ending story. We oh love. my god, I love never ending story. <laughs> yeah, so the story. Yeah. Like we have, okay, this is your your job. Okay. Is to now watch only things that make you happy. happy. This woke ism stuff is insane, and I don't want you to watch anything with even a hint of that. Yes. No. Um. Yeah. And read books. Books. Get inspired. Oh, books. Art. There's so much art. There's so much ancestral wisdom for us. Yes. That, that's the good thing about technology, right? Museum. Oh, you know, I think I'm going to go to the museum now that I can go to the museum. Yes, go. I mean, yeah, I haven't been. You know, what's that one? I think it's the Museum of Natural History. You want to uh, go? There's a, maybe maybe so one day. Go to the Met? Or I yeah, know, yeah, somewhere. the Met. Let's go somewhere right now. To right now? I don't know. Yeah, well, I haven't been to a museum in, since before the pandemic. Okay, well, that's your prescription. No more Instagram. No more Instagram. Uh, oh, garbage, God. Garbage, junk food, news. Okay. No more. Uh, maybe just tie wire on Thursday. <laughs> You're addicted, Julie. You're addicted. Now it's 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 huh? just going to get harder, I think, before it gets better. And people are telling me, oh, no, mandates are over. And I don't know where people's mentality is, like. They're, it's just like they're in another, in another world, in a in a better world, and they can't see what's in front of them. And I mean, they think it's a gift and, and a curse to have this awareness. I yeah. know better is coming, yeah. but I'm I'm scared as shit now, I, and I'm doing everything that I'm doing 
but I'm doing it because I'm afraid and I want to fight back. I'm not afraid of the corona. I'm afraid of, I don't want to have to show my papers to go to the grocery. I know you love animals so much. Yeah. They're so pretty.